<laughs> that's, that's what happens. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's Friday at Craftiness, and that is um, Art Journal Day. So I am going to Art Journal. Um, I opened up what I did last week, and I was dissatisfied. So I'm just going to keep working on it today and see if I can't get it to a spot that feels a little more um, finished. Uh, remember, my whole approach to this is that... Uh, it's not the finished product that matters. It's the um, it's the process. So even though I didn't particularly like it, um, it still served its function last week. Um, and there are parts of it that I like. But today I'm just going to go back in and and add more layers because that's my thing. All right. Hope uh, hope you play along with me. We had a great session on Wednesday where I actually had people working alongside me in a Zoom class. And you know, with this, I can't tell if you are working along with me, but I hope you are because um, that's a, that's the point. I want you guys to be, be it's journaling. Also fun to watch as well. Yeah, it's good, <laughs> good. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I do that. <laughs> I mean, you know, it helps when people have British accents, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I can do a pretty good fake accent when I'm not asked to, but when I'm asked to, it completely short circuits my brain. But you know, um, I growing up with British accents in my household, I actually don't notice them so much. So like, I don't notice that my parents have an accent. People say to me, "Oh, your parents' accent," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, they sound weird. <laughs> they sound that uh, their accents get deeper when they." you know, hang out with their families. Sure. So when they go to England, they call up and they're very British. <laughs> my, mother, my mother speaks the Queen's English. All right, so I'm gonna start today uh, with this ice. I, it's one of my favorite mediums and sometimes I forget. I forget that. <laughs> and I love creating windows with it because that's really where you really see um, what's great about it, where you can see the, um, the color you know, depending on how thick you put it down, and um, the interaction, because it's translucent uh, and transparent actually, it creates these windows in your work that can be really satisfying. So I'm just gonna throw down a couple moments of this, and these come in these packets, and so I feel like I need to get out one of those paint tube cranks that so you crank it out from the bottom Michelle says hi. Hey, Michelle. It was so fun crafting with you the other night. Thanks for joining me. Is that the Dina Wakely stencil? It is. This is her Squirrels. She actually has a brand new release that she put out this morning. I didn't have a chance to watch it yet, but I'm going to. Uh, but if you've seen it and there's something you want, let me know. Chances are I'll be bringing it in anyway because I almost always bring her stuff in. But just let me know if there's something like, I have to have this stencil. I have to have this stencil. I'll add it. I'll do that order today. Actually, I might still get my show discount. So already you can kind of see the interaction where it's sitting on top of other colors and intensifying them or interacting with them in ways that um, uh, highlight what was already on there. Um, this is a paper artsy or darkroom door. Maybe it's darkroom door. 
stencil that I really like. It's it's close to being compromised enough that I probably won't use it much more. Um, my definition of that is when it's so chunky that when I try to get the texture through it, I end up with splodges instead of the actual stencil. So, but that's all personal. Some of you would have abandoned this after the first uh, the first moment when I let stuff dry on it. I get that. Let's see if I get a decent impression. Did you find it? <laughs> dark room door or paper arts? I think actually the shape is dark room door. I'm not sure. <laughs> yep. The era of COVID. Glass fogging. Glasses fogging. One of those common complaints. Alright, I'm already liking this a little better. It's added a little more energy and um but you can see that I used a lot of uh water soluble stuff last week because you can still see it sitting on the page and uh, it's it's interacting with the layers that I'm putting down now so you can see with these really thin layers here that it's um it's it's drawing some of that tint off the page and up through uh through the paint this was the um Sizzix dimensional paste that I've been using recently it's very it's uh, almost chalky and uh like frosting and it is an acrylic, so. I didn't really like how muddy this particular color here ended up, so part of me wants to mitigate that. I hope you can hear me. We figured out that um, the mic I was using was actually creating a lot of staticky sound like a rustling sort of constant rustling in the background my daughter was like what's that noise <laughs> and so I have abandoned it for now and I don't I really don't know all my mic options have been pretty terrible this is the iZinc 3D paste um, it is a texture paste that's been t previous. Uh, it's opaque and it's tinted, so I've got this uh, um, intensity to it, which is kind of fun. And um, I'm just going to point out right now, I've got it represented in two places, and there are there's a basic art principle that you do things in threes, um, and I'm just going to go with that today because there's a little part of me that's like. Uh, it looks stupid just two things plunked down like that um, as with all art principles they're made to be broken so by all means ignore that and then sometimes when you have something that feels a little plunked on the page if you come around and mush the edges up or add a little around the edges it looks a little less like it's just plunked like you stick a sticker in the middle of your page The only downside to these cool little pouches is that sometimes the things stick. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm intentionally coming in and layering the same stencil over and over itself with uh, different um, mediums and different, I'm using an opaque medium and then a translucent medium and just trying to play with that echo that happens when you do that. Okay, thanks for letting me know. That's, um, it's always a worry. Okay. So far I've used um, this teal color there in French. So this is a uh, blue glacier green. Greenland. Uh, I used, I think this is called tomato, yep. And then this one is called frostbite. And this one I'm not going to use a stencil with. I'm just going to scrape this across and see what it does when it interacts with some of the texture and layer and color that's already there. And uh, this is an easy way to change a moment, like that color that I don't like that's underneath some of this stuff. This is an easy way to layer in and cover that up. Just Now this is an acrylic. It is going to seal um, this down and um, resist fluid on top. So, you know, that's a consideration. But hopefully you can see maybe how it's highlighting some of the texture I put down as well. Thumbs up, a floating thumbs up. <laughs> I can't, you can't see who, who does that. You can't. <laughs> That's why we like comments because we can't, we know you're watching, but we don't know who you are. Yeah. Which, scary. not that we need to know who you are, enjoy it regardless. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> sometimes it's but like. It's funny, it's like a little. Oh, you know what I saw coming in right around the corner today? Yeah. Um, there was a, like a little bag, like a little white bag with a handle on it mm -hmm. attached to a balloon that said happy birthday and it was flying up <laughs> over the chair. <laughs> I couldn't tell if that was on purpose and it was right Oh, I'm around. sure it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. There goes someone's birthday present. <laughs> I couldn't see, you know, the light change, but I couldn't see what happened. Yeah. Alright, this is, so far this has just gotten more chaotic. <laughs> I do like what happened here when I added that and how you can see some of this texture now that was from the first round. But if you don't like it, you're not finished, so keep going. Even if I can't close the book at the end, I will have, I will, I will keep going until I like it. What? The video downloaded. Finally. <laughs> the the ice does take a little while to dry. It's when it's not the fastest drying medium.
Here's a purple color, they call this crocus. So now I'm scraping this over places that I've got some texture and color and trying to change the background tone a little bit. Let's see, you can sort of squash it in around your texture and get a, a new look. So now it's sort of settling in some of this, the texture crevices that are made by a lot of texture and it's highlighting the shapes that I have and the color. So and if, I don't know if you can see how it's kind of shifted the color, the tone on the page quite a bit. A little texture I had down there. I don't know if you can see these end bits. I always forget that. Hi, Candice. And then um, Michelle asked if we're doing an unboxing today. We sure are. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get them out of my car for one thing. Okay. Some serious box. boxes. Um, oh, I'm enjoying that. That changed this page a lot. If you can't see it. Um, Lois had a little trouble logging in, but we're happy she's here today. Yeah. It's, uh, Facebook is being weird. There's something going on. Yeah. Everyone's complaining about it. It's affected everything I've done on Facebook the last week, whether I've been watching or casting. Everything's been off. All my retail groups are complaining about it. <laughs> Alright, so in some places that purple has uh, evened out some color and I'm really enjoying, it's gone, you know, there's a lot going on now, but I'm really enjoying the color at this point a lot more than I was. And you can see those windows that I put in where you can see the previous texture underneath. Right there. I'm gonna add some gold. The golden? This is um, Sizzix. Uh, I'm really enjoying this paint right now. It's got a nice pigment load. It's got a lot of gleam. This is uh, their gold. And I've been using my art brayer, my spongy brayer. And let's see what happens if I add a little gold this way. Highlighting some of the texture that's on here. Yeah. 
Worked in some spots, not so much in the others. It worked really well here. This is an Art Deco color, just a little um, desert turquoise. Again, an easy way to add a veil of color onto a piece. Change it up. And no matter what you do, you can always, always, always change what's going on by adding a veil of color, either an opaque one or a translucent one, like with the ice. So you can always change things by coming along and adding something on top. See how that intensified what's going on on the page? Digging into some of those reds and muting some of the blues, making them more pinky purple. Some of that gold is now popping up between, under from underneath the red, adding a richness. So yeah, this is one of my favorite, um, favorite, favorite, favorite mediums. Look at all that that's going on on this page. I love it. So glad I leveled up. In fact, I'm pretty close to thinking this is finished, but I actually am looking over here. This is a piece that I did the other day um, on my uh, free art journaling demo. So I'm just going to set this aside. And I'm going to work a little bit on this because I want to do the same thing. I'm going to add, in fact, that red just did this transformative. Uh, you got a wow from Candice. Yeah. And Sweet. she says it's getting better with each pass. <laughs> yeah. <Half the> vision. <laughs> exactly. It's about, it's about trusting that even if you do something that you're like, oh, I wish I hadn't done that, you can just keep going. Add some more. And Lois like the lower left page. Yeah. I'll go back to it before I sign off and we'll take a look at what happened. But um, I really, you know, the ice adds dimension without obscuring what you've already done. Um, it adds color and those interactions with the color. Ooh, I already like this one so much better having done that right it really changed it and this is something it was a sample piece my sample pieces don't always end up looking the way I want them because I'm not doing them for me I'm doing them a sample so I do more to them than maybe I go beyond where I, I think oh this feels finished so that I can demonstrate things so sometimes 
my sample pieces um, do warrant another pass because they're not finished when I when I'm done with the class. This is me creating those windows with the squarbles stencil that I like so much, that we like so much. It's a it's a group thing. We all love it. You can add a little interest by not doing it so square. You know, having a little offset and just choosing one to do, not all of them. I do have my sidekick next to me. I haven't really used it because I've been using up all the medium, but a sidekick is just a place for you to scrape off your brush or your wedge um, if you feel like you have enough medium on your work and don't want to add it. You can keep adding it. Okay, so I don't know if you remember what it looked like five minutes ago, but that is already significantly shifted. And I'm going to do... pretty good about this. This might be done. Yeah, I feel like that's all I needed to do really to give me to give it a little mm, a little visual interest and a little more depth. So ice, ice is what saved my pieces today. Or transform them. They didn't need saving so much as just. So there's that one. And then let's go back. I'm still not sure this one's finished, to be honest, but uh, this one feels a little more complete. Um, this one feels like there's still more I could do. So maybe next week I'll come back and see if that still feels like that's the case. And if so, I'll keep going. Um, but I'm just really enjoying some of these moments with all of these layers of color. Really, really, really am. All right. Well, if you enjoyed that, I have a mini mixed media. It's a little more intentional um, and focused uh, where we're going to work on little cards and we're going to do some very specific techniques in order to layer our medias into each other. It's not going to be texture. It's going to be just color. We are going to use stencils. Um, I have a kit available if you're interested. It's 50 bucks and you get everything except the water to do the, um, to do the, the project. <laughs> I thought about it. I actually thought about it. Um, yeah, but you get the brush and the sponge and the skewer that I'm asking you to use and the pen that um, I'd like you to use and some paints and uh, the actual paper and the tape to tape it off and a stencil. So it's a full, full kit for 50 bucks.
Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, and then the class itself is uh, 20. And it's a Zoom class. Is it 1 o'clock? 1.30? 1 o'clock on Saturday. And um, it's... Uh, I'm excited. It's, I, it's, it was a lot of fun to do the sample, and so I'm really looking forward to teaching you guys the techniques. And it's just a little way to maybe, if this seems a little crazy and a little um, complicated and a little too big, this is a nice way to bring it down to something you could literally carry around in your uh, you know, backpack and take with you to the park or with, you your, know, bottle of water. with your bottle of water. <laughs> so now I'm regretting not adding the jar of water. <laughs> next time. All right, folks, thanks for joining me today. And I hope that you're staying safe and that you're all well and uh, that you're keeping creative. All right. See you soon.